Good morning. Welcome to the First Unitarian Fellowship of Nanaimo. My name is Bill Wolverton, and I'm your service leader this morning. Whatever your ethnicity, theological belief, gender, sexual orientation, age, and everything else that makes you who you are, please know that you are warmly welcome in our community. If this is your first time with us, a very special welcome to you. We are a diverse community and our Sunday services are unique each week. We encourage you to try us out a couple of times to get a taste of the variety. And we'd love to welcome you to the community, so please consider sharing your contact information with us and join us for coffee, snacks, and conversation after the service if you're here in person. We have a wonderful website, ufon.ca, and invite you to check it out for more detailed information about who we are, the services we offer, and how you can connect with us. We acknowledge today that we are on the unceded traditional territory of the Shnemuk First Nation. As Unitarians, we are committed to the work of reconciliation required to address the harm done to all Indigenous peoples and their cultures by non-Indigenous peoples. We have much to learn from the Indigenous perspective that the earth is the source of all life and that our responsibility is to honor and care for it. It is time for today's announcements. We thank Bob and Debbie Goodman for the lovely flowers that grace the screen this morning. A reminder that we record these services for privacy reasons, the joys and concerns are edited out before the service is uploaded to the website and when there is a children's story that is also edited out for copyright reasons. All our services can be found on our website. Reverend Deborah will be doing a service in June about the songs that change the world. She is looking for examples from you. Please send her an email or talk to her after the service today. And now there will be an announcement from the Ministerial Search Committee. So, understand you need a search committee for a new minister. Oh, there's one there. <laughs> Fred, you're leaving now, aren't you? Right. Well, Captain Brian knows what you need. He loves the ocean. So we'll just get a minister that loves the ocean. We're all done. Thank you very much. Oh, but I bet you scallywags have some ideas. Now all I have to do is fill out a survey and let me know what it is, and maybe that'll influence the search committee. But... Many of you haven't filled out the survey yet, so it's back to Captain Brian. We'll just find a minister <clears throat> that loves the ocean. But we decided to extend the time you have until tomorrow. You have until tomorrow to fill out your survey. And if Captain Brian was looking for a new ship, he know what he'd do. He'd be wanting his crew to be yelling their opinions from the masthead and be loud and tell them what they want. So fill out the survey, all of you, please. And this is a democratic institution, so we'll give you a choice. You can fill out the survey or you can on mon by Monday, whoops, sorry. You can fill out the survey by Monday or Tuesday, walk the plank. <laughs> there you go, so survey is tomorrow. Take the helm, Mr. Wolverton, thank you. Th thank you, Brian. I guess that's better than keel hauling. <laughs> uh, to find out about all special events, uh, groups, and meetings taking place in the fellowship, either go to the calendar on our website or read the weekly update email sent you on Thursdays. Now, uh, let us enter into sacred time. Nikol will lead us into service, into worship through music. Um, Patrick uh, contacted me yesterday, letting me know that he, he was not feeling well and that uh, I'd be on my own today, which is terrifying without my, my buddy here. Um, but he asked, uh, there was a request for the Vivaldi's um, uh, Spring. Um, I suppose Stravinsky's Rite of Spring is not as popular 
And, uh, uh, but I, I unfortunately didn't have time to prepare it. I just got home last night from Whistler. So instead, uh, this is Here Comes the Sun. Uh, maybe with a little bit of, I can see clearly now, we'll see what happens, so. Spring inspired.
Did you know that today is International Biodiversity Day and Goth Day? And if there's a connection between the two, it must lie somewhere in the creative expression of nature in all her splen many splendid forms. Did you know that tomorrow is Victoria Day and World Turtle Day, which I imagine connects the slow and consistent reign of the current Queen of England with the natural wisdom of the turtle. <laughs> Elizabeth recently entered her 96th year and is the oldest reigning female monarch in world history. Turtles generally live 10 to 80 years, but sea turtles and large land tortoises can live to 150 years. Did you know that Victoria Day is the oldest non-religious national holiday in Canada? And we are the only country in the world still to celebrate it. <laughs> Seems a bit of a fossil of a holiday, but enduring, just like the Queen. Now there's another kind of queen to celebrate and one who needs our support more than Elizabeth, and that is the queen bee. To raise awareness of the importance of these pollinators, the threats they face and their contribution to sustainable development, the UN designated May 20th as World Bee Day. And, but I'd say every day was bee day, to be or not to be is the question. To steal a line from Hamlet, who had a raft of problems, as do the bees. This morning, I'm going to play on the theme of being and doing. And I'll touch on bees a bit. And we'll listen to their drone of contentment and despair and celebrate their gifts to humans, their wisdom, and their art of nourishment. So let it be, let it be. We'll now light our chalice. We kindle a flame. We trust will lead us forward as we travel in unknown lands where the question Shall I ever get there? Resounds a clear put note in every silence. Now let us sing our first song Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. are on the screen, or will be.
yeah, enter and rejoice and come in and be merry as merry as a bee in May. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think on the hum and the bumble of bees, it really makes me happy. I love their buzziness and their busyness. So I begin with some bee stats. A bee is a cold blooded egg laying animal. A bee is an insect with two pairs of wings and six jointed legs, a three part body, pair of antennae and compound eyes. I would love to have compound eyes. Yeah, yeah. And did you know that bees can't see the color red? But they can see the ultraviolet spectrum, which we humans cannot. Now bees provide free pollination to trees, shrubs, and flowers. And in return, they scoop up that sweet pollen and take it home to their queen. And we humans benefit from the honey and the wax that they produce. But what do we do for the bees? So taking my cue from the bees this morning, I'm not going to be flying in a straight line. Rather, I hope I will look for some sweet nectar in the happiest of flowers. Being a bee is different from doing bee. In our lives, there are times when we just simply must be busy, when the creative juices are flowing and the notes flying from our fingertips, when we have to run after toddlers or the rent or a job or the gorgeous non-binary human who we hope will love us back. There are times to be industrious, goal-oriented and accomplished and to be as busy as a bee and then there are times to simply be there are times to return to the place of our soul for pause for spiritual nourishment and refreshment this is one reason we need to be together on sunday mornings we need time to pause time for our spiritual refreshment so this morning, we're going to sing our meditation. It's return again. And we'll follow Nico on this and the choir who were practicing it this morning. Return to who you are. Return to what you are. And return to where you are. This implies that life moves us away from who we are and what we are and where we are. And we need a reminder to return back again. And this is true at any age. 
two stories. The first is from my first and only class in environmental biology or human ecology, I think it was called at the time. And this is where I learned a very valuable life lesson. This one was an experiment using fruit flies to understand the effect of speed on flying. So the professor at the front of the room had a variety of mason jars with lids on. And in the first mason jar, there were three fruit flies and they were buzzing gently around this jar. And then he picked up the second mason jar and there were, let's say a dozen fruit flies and they were buzzing around a little bit faster, but happily they had lots of space. And the next mason jar had 50 fruit flies in it and they were buzzing around really, but not as fast as the last mason jar that had 200 fruit flies in it. They were just flying crazy fast. You could hardly see them. They were going so fast in this mason jar. The wisdom in the, in the experiment was the more fruit flies that you put in the same amount of space, the faster they fly. So driving in Port Townsend, you can get anywhere there in five minutes. I was really shocked coming from Vancouver, a couple of million people, Port Townsend, a couple of thousand. I was shocked when I first arrived there, I was going there to do my internship, that people actually stopped at stop signs. <laughs> and I mean, not just stop, I mean, full stop, like stopped, you took an inhale and an exhale before you even considered putting your foot back on the pedal. And I know many of you have traveled in the world, and I invite you to think of the ginormous cities where you've been to. I recently had to go to Vancouver, the closest ginormous city. And driving off that ferry at Horseshoe Bay, you enter the great race. Everyone powers up that first hill as fast as you possibly can to make it into the first pack that hits the highway. No stopping. We drivers careen down the highway into the city, jockeying for position, speeding up to overtake someone, to be the first at the next stoplight. No longer smiling, <clears throat> taking life in hand, pushing ahead, tense, judgments rising, generosity and gentleness thrown out the window, humor and ease way in the background. We are no longer country flies. We are city flies, flying as fast as we need to, to keep up. Now Nanaimo used to be a little like Port Townsend, I think. No more. <laughs> no, we're now starting to speed up like those fruit flies. So what I learned about human beings from this ecology class, I learned that cities have an effect on our bodies. Our behavior is directly affected by the density of millions of people living side by side, stacked up in layers of cell like condos, buzzing in and out. No wonder we need to be reminded to return to who we are and where we are and what we are. Second story. Living in the urban environment, I knew I was stuck in a jar where the density of living affected my body and daily choices that I made. Some of the time I remembered that it affected my work and my relationships. 
When I remembered, I knew that I often needed help to return to what I was and who I was and where I was. I needed assistance getting back to myself. So I would go on a retreat. And on this one occasion, I left the city to a quiet setting into a group program that emphasized self-awareness. And even then it was a challenge for me to shift the speed setting of the gears that I was used to operating on. Round about the day a third, the day three, I took my break from the programming and went outside to sit in the sun, like that sun we've been having recently. So I'm sitting on a chair, feeling that warmth of the sun and the gentle sea breeze. And I look around myself and there are people like me scattered in chairs or slowly walking with no particular destination. It was a very peaceful setting, except inside of me. Inside, I was still buzzing. I was still busy-minded, thinking of the lists of to-dos and not yet dones, and will I ever get to them? And I looked down at the beautiful green grass shining in that sunlight, and I watched a bee, a busy bee, land on the grass. Now, before I share the significance of this bee landing on this grass in front of me, I want you to know that the bee is my namesake. That's true. Deborah is a feminine name of Hebrew origin, meaning the bee. Devorah, the original Hebrew, was a prophetess and a warrior and a busy woman. She was a judge, too. I take the connection to Devorah and the name Deborah to heart. Being busy as a bee is literally my name and my identity. So there I am in the sunshine, in my chair, looking at the grass shining in the sunlight and at this busy bee landing. But the busy bee surprised me. Rather than doing something busy, he walked down the blade of the grass and he rested. He just hung out. I watched him for a long time. I don't know if he was allowed to do it. Maybe he was <laughs> hiding. <laughs> Maybe he didn't want any witnesses. But the fact is that he rested in the grass. And the lesson for me was clear. Even the busy bee needs to rest.
Hmm. I've struggled with being and doing most of my life. And it was always moving from the doing to the being that I had to do. Rarely did I ever get too much beingness. <laughs> but I don't want to give doing the bad rap. It's not a bad thing. Getting things done is necessary. Civilization and this fellowship would not exist if folks didn't get things done. And I thank you all for how much you do. So this last week, uh, I was with the ministers of Canada from coast to coast, not unfortunately in person, um, but it was a delightful four days on, on Zoom. And as part of the programming, we had a presentation by Liz James. Now Liz is not a minister, but a person who buzzes definitely with vitality and humor Liz did begin her training to become a minister. She was at the same theological college I was at for a couple of years. But then she realized her being wasn't put together in a way that most ministers need to be put together to do the job of ministry as it is designed in this time. And this was crushing for Liz, and yet, she couldn't help being who she was. So she kept going. Being true to herself, she did what she did best. Her story is amazing and inspiring, and I encourage you to find her podcasts and her blogs on The Cracked Cup and hear her story in your own words. I just want to tell you that Liz who never gave up doing or being herself, seated and managed and grew an online community called the UU Hysterical Society. Yes, it's a play on the UU Historical Society <laughs> and a play on historical treatment of uppity, buzzy women who were considered hysterical when they were usually brimming over with great ideas that may not have fit in with the currently acceptable behavior allowed women. Victorian era women were rarely judges, warriors, or prophetesses. Perhaps something to consider on Victoria Day. Anyway, Liz James started the UU Hysterical Society, and she taught herself what she needed to know spent about the same amount of money she would have spent on theological training. And now, drum roll please, she, thank you, she leads an online Motley Crew community of 150,000 Unitarian Universalists. Yep, 150,000 Unitarian Universalist members from all over the world, of which she thinks maybe about 130,000 are really active. Of those, 7,000 of them are Canadian. Compare that to there being just under 5,000 members of Canadian congregations. I think she's on to something. <laughs> Staying true to herself and who and what she is Liz traveled that less frequented road and created and continues to create what only she imagined and only she had the skill set to build. Her being is good and may lead the rest of us into a new shape of Unitarian Universalism. Back to the bees. Remember that earlier story? Please, please, the bees, really, it was all there, wasn't it? Bees are doing as much as they possibly can. And we need to think about what we need to do to support the bees. Right now, bees are like the canary in the coal mine shaft for many of the species. 
They're being wiped out by disease and pesticides, current farming practices, the removal of foraging lands, and the diversity of plants from which they gather their pollen. These lovely creatures who, being true to themselves, give us the sweetness of their hard work and they need now our help our bees are not just going to go on strike unfortunately they will just simply be no more so i end today with a plea could we have a little wider screen please Thank you, Ruth. This is unscripted. I'm moving. <laughs> so I end today with a plea for the bees. This week, and more if you can, please do at least one thing for the bees. Think about gardening. Plant flowers and shrubs and trees that bees love. If you see here, this is an Audrey Blue Shades Arborita, but it's got a little sign on it that says RHS plants for pollinators. So look for that sign if you're choosing plants for your garden. Eat local honey. Frederick's honey and cedar is an example of that. Become a beekeeper, though that's a big task to take on. But you can support, this is beeswax, beautiful, please come up and take a look later. But you can support people who are supporting the bees. So, this is all I'm asking of you, is just to do one thing to support the bees. And if we all do all that we can, can be done for the bees, we'll turn this world and their world and ours around. Thank you for listening. We're now gonna sing, turn the world around, follow the words on the screen, and take a deep breath because there's a lot of words and we're going to go fast. <laughs> So
Change for You project is your opportunity to tell us your stories about what you have done that might be called climate action. Anything counts as long as it's recent. The stories can be about a minute long. We can do a couple of people a week and you're encouraged to do more than one story over the course of the year. Does anyone wish to tell their story today? Please raise your electronic hand on Zoom or come to the mic near the tree. Jenny is on Zoom. Hi, um, this counts as it's recent, but it's also my life <laughs> lifelong journey with everything you see and everything I wear, I buy at the thrift store. And then when I wanna move things on, I have this probably backwards. You guys see it backwards? I have a free sign I make, painted and I hang it on a tree outside my house and have a pile. And I invite my neighbors to also drop anything off they want. And within two weeks, usually everything is gone. So that's my, thank you. Hi, where is she? Jenny. Billy's coming up. Ah. You have to come down. I'm in charge of the tree. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not finding your name, Jenny. There you are. No, we've already got someone, Francis. Jenny already rent, and uh, Lily is over at the mic. Okay, am I next? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I'm in, I joined the environmental committee last year, and that's very new for me. I've been, um, climate change has caused a lot of anxiety for me, and I wasn't sure really what to do that would make a difference. So I joined, and that was new. I've been learning a lot. And recently, I attended the presentation that Brian and Francis made to Nanaimo City Council about uh, banning gas hookups for new buildings and switching over to heat pumps. Of course, you see that was successful, yay. And I'm glad for that. But more than that, even if it, I mean, it was just doing it, I was glad I was there to support them, to support the initiative. And I listened to other presentations and I learned a lot and it felt good to do that. Um, and it's totally new for me. And it's, it's good because I'm finding out what I can do. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else online? No, we're good. Okay, th thank you, uh, Jenny and Lily. You might feel like your leaf is just a tiny flutter in the wind, but it will help strengthen our tree and our tree will help build forest towards a just, safe world for all. Now that we are both online and in the hall, we welcome your donations and pledges in three different ways. First, we have set up the Unitarian Fellowship Bank account to automatically deposit e-transfers sent to info at ufon.ca. Second, you can write a check and pop it in the mail. And third, if you're in the hall, there's a basket at the back of the room where you can place your donation after the service. Our charity for April through June is Equal Justice Canada. If you would like to donate to the designated charity for the month, please note on your e-transfer or check. We are grateful for your offering. Just to see. We are nearing the end of our service. After we sing Carry the Flame, um, you may have the opportunity, there are breakout rooms available online for the next 30 minutes, or you can help ourselves to coffee and snacks that will be available towards the back of the hall. Thank you for your participation today. Thank you, Bill. Our closing words. And now, let it be about the turning from dark to the light. Let it be about our loving. Let it be about the sacred life that moves through every living thing, from B to you and B to me. Let it be about the flowering 
and the beauty blooming in every heart. Let it be about the maturing and the knowing that we become our dreaming, our greatest and deepest imaginings. Let it be about the discovery, the voyage, the experience. Let it be about joy. Let it be. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Shall see.